everybody. Welcome to church. We got about five minutes before the service starts, so here are some church appropriate dance moves you can do whenever the spirit moves you. So get on up and let's sweat to some scriptures. Or maybe not. Or just, just let's go. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Shirts on the face. See it on the face. Yeah. Bring it together. Here we go. Let it go. You take the stone. You let it go. You're unhindered by armor. Let that elbow sway. Elbow. 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 Okay. One of my personal favorites. Resurrection. You gotta get down to get back. Yeah. Keep working, it, guys. Keep working. You're doing great. I'm doing great. I'm getting a little tired. Crush it. Crush it. You gotta crush it. Crush it. We gotta stomp hard. Stomp hard. Stomp hard. You're crushing it. Crushing it. Crushing it.
<sighs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Harvest Christian Center. It's Pastor Beverly again, of the children's pastor here. And I'm just glad that you all can be with us today. Well, today is Palm Sunday, and it starts my favorite week. I just wanted to, normally we go through and we play the we play a game, but I can't do that with you kids today. So we're just gonna have to do it a little differently. We're gonna play on the road to Easter. So let's start out with on the road with Jesus. Here we are, he's coming to Jerusalem. Why is he coming to Jerusalem, you're asking, on Palm Sunday? He's coming to celebrate the Passover, which is a week-long celebration. Why is there Passover? Do you remember back when Moses' time and all those plagues in Egypt, what the last plague was the Passover and how they had to put the blood of the lamb on the doors so that the Death, death can pass over them and save the firstborn child. And they celebrate that every year. And a lot of people would come to Jerusalem to the temple so that they can worship God and ask for blessings and forgiveness. And that's why Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. Well, he asked his couple of his disciples to go in and get a donkey for him to ride into Jerusalem. And they put their coats and everything on top of the donkey so he could ride on it. And as he's going into Jerusalem, all these people started seeing Jesus and they started cutting down these palm branches, which were great big branches like this. And, that, and they would lay them down so the donkey can walk on like a red carpet, but this was a green carpet. And he walked in honor and they were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means praise or joy. Can you imagine? They were praising and being happy to see Jesus. They had heard about him. Some of them had seen all the wonderful things they had done, and they were so glad to see him coming into Jerusalem. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So they knew that he was part of God. They knew that. And as he enters into the city and he's going to the temple and he gets into the temple and in Matthew 21, 12, through 12 through 17, it says that he cleansed the temple. Okay. Why was he cleansing the temple? Because when he walked in the doors, he saw all these buyers and sellers, and they were selling offerings, which was um, the doves, the lambs, the calves, and that, that they would offer up for their sins to ask God to forgive them. And they were selling them right there in God's house instead of worshiping, because this was God's place. This was God's home. Why do we come to church? So that we can learn about God and to worship him. And, uh, but they had overtaken it with selling stuff and changing money and what have you and just turn it into a bargain bin. And Jesus got mad, so he turned over all the tables and he chased them all out and cleansed the temple and got rid of all of the bad deeds so that it could be turned back into what it was, God's house. And then for the next couple of days, from Monday, Tuesday, Jesus did some wonderful things. He spent time with the people. He went around telling them stories, telling them what to expect in the beginning, and, that, and telling them about him 
and how he and his disciples and his children are. And people would come and listen to him and learn from what he was telling them. Remember the, the parable of the ten virgins and the parable of the tough and of the talents? And then he talked about being with the, them being his sheep and he being the shepherd. And that, yes, Je Jesus was teaching them to be prepared and what we should learn from them. And then that Wednesday was Passover meal. So they were sitting down. They had gone to Bethany to uh, Simon's house, Simon the leper and that Jesus had cleansed. They went to his house to celebrate the Passover. And Jesus and his 12 buds were up, at, up in the upper room, and they were celebrating. And as they were celebrating, Jesus looked around, and he started telling them what to expect from the, what's going to be happening, trying to prepare them for something, upcoming event. And when he told them that they were going to turn their backs on him and run away, Peter said, no, not me. I will stand by you. And, that, and Jesus said, you're going to, do, you're going to portray, portray me. And, that, and Peter said, no, he wouldn't, but we'll see what happens. And then he told them that somebody really was going to portray them. And then in the middle of that, left the room and ran away. And he went to go talk to the Pharisees and Sadducees about Jesus. Well, as they were praying, Jesus took some bread and broke it and said, this is my body to remember him by. Then he took some wine and said that this was his, in remembrance of his blood. He was preparing for them for the future. What's going to happen? Well, then when they got done with the meal and what, what have you, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, the leaven, leaven of his disciples and Jesus. Jesus said, will you pray with me? And then out of the eleven, he took three of his, three others, his buds, Peter, John, and James, and asked them if they would come over here to pray with him. And he asked them if, to pray for what was going to happen. And Jesus went off just a stone throw away. And when he was, he came back to check on everybody, they were asleep. And he woke them up and says, how can you be asleep? Don't you know what's going to be happening? I need your support. Please pray for me. Then he goes away again. And he's asking God, my father, if this is possible, let this cup pass by me. Nevertheless, not as my will, but your will. Jesus knew something was going to happen. And he really, really was concerned about it. And he was asking God that, to t if it was all possible not to let it happen but if God intended it to, ha to be so then he will accept the consequences and do as God says well lo and behold later on that evening there came the soldiers and the Pharisees and the Sadducees they came looking for Jesus and they wanted to arrest him. And in the midst of all of this, the 11, in the midst of all this, Judas comes up and kisses Jesus on the cheek. This signifies, told the uh, soldiers, who Jesus was. 
Judas portrayed Jesus and was sorry for it. He sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. And when this happened, the 11 all ran away and that they were afraid. But, and Jesus was arrested. It says so in 26 verses 50 through 56. And Jesus was taken away. Well, while he was being arrested and Peter followed him to see what was happening, but he stayed back in a distance. He didn't want anybody to see him. And when he saw Jesus go on trial, and they were trying to accuse him of doing all of these bad things, and that Peter was standing outside the door, and this girl came up to him and said, I know you. You were with him. You were with, the, with Jesus. And he said, no, I wasn't. You must be mistaken. Well, this happened three times. Jesus, that Peter denied knowing Jesus, even being his friend. And then the rooster crowed, and Peter ran away because he, he was disgusted with himself and upset. Have you ever been upset that you've done something wrong? And that and you needed to ask for forgiveness. Well, Jesus is put on trial three times. Then they, when the Sadducees and Pharisees couldn't justify why they should arrest Jesus, they took him to Pontius Pilate and asked him to asked him to judge Jesus. Now, Pontius Pilate was a Roman emperor. Rome was in control of the Israelites at that time. They were ruling over top of them. And he was in control. And the, in control. His r word was final. And so, when he couldn't find anything wrong with him, with Jesus, they put him in front of the people and asked them what did they want him to do. And he, he was thinking that, oh, they'll let him go free because they had just been praising him just days ago, calling it, saying Hosanna and everything. And he was pretty sure that they were going to let him free. But you know what the crowd yelled? Crucify him, crucify him. And so Pilate says, then he goes, I wash my hands of this. Let it be so. And so they took Jesus away. And as the guards had, had him in a cell, hold it in that, waiting for them to take him to be crucified, they started mocking him. It said that they put a crown of thorns on his head. Now, the thorns weren't just a little hickory thorns that you get on blackberry bushes. They were these big, thick, long thorns. And they made a crown of it and they put it on his head and pushed it down. And they made fun of him and they made a sign that says, King of the Jews. And then, later on, they take Jesus away as, they're walk, as he's put on the cross on the hill that he's up there and that there, he's not alone. There's two other men with him. That, uh, two uh, thieves. And one of them is saying, if you're such a king, of king, you're, you're a man of God, you would save us and get us down from here right now. And the other man on the other side said, he has done nothing wrong. We deserve what we're getting, our punishment. We were bad. But Jesus had done nothing wrong. He does not deserve it. And then he asked Jesus to forgive him for what he had done. 
and Jesus told him that he would be with him in heaven. Have you ever done anything wrong and asked for forgiveness? But we know that when we do something wrong, we still have to take the consequences and the punishment, right? Yes. Well, as the day went on, Jesus was praying to God and telling them to forgive them of what they're doing. And he took on the, on the sins of the world. And at noontime, the world turned black. No light could come through. As Jesus is covered with all of what we've all done, our lying, our cheating, stealing, he's taken this on, not just one or two, but the whole world. And then he dies. His blood is spilt for us. Then, they, then in 27, verses 57 and 11, they take Jesus down off the cross and they wrap him up in a cloth and they take him to a tomb and they place him in the tomb. And then they roll this big stone in front of it and put guards all around it so nobody will take him Steal them, steal him. And Jesus was in that tomb, buried, and then it came Sunday, Easter Sunday. Oh, Mary Magdalene goes running over to the tomb. She wanted to prepare his body. And when she gets there, the stone is rolled away, and she looks inside, and Jesus is gone. She thinks somebody had stolen him. And so she runs to go find Peter, and Peter comes back. And what does, what does he see? The tomb is empty. But then again, as they're leaving, Jesus appears to him. He has come back alive, and they start celebrating. He has risen from the dead. He has taken on our, our salvation. Just like it was back then, being put on the cross with the blood on the doors, Jesus' blood came to save us. We need to ask Jesus to forgive us for all the bad things we've done because he paid the price for us. He died so that we could have everlasting life and live in heaven with him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to forgive us of all of the bad things that we've done, dear Lord. Forgive us of our sins, what we thought, what we say, what we've done, dear Lord. For we know that you are the Son of God and that you came to this earth to forgive us and so that we can live with you forever in heaven. Thank you, dear Jesus, for what you did for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.